Well, we got the finest in the land right here. That's right. We got Pearls of Wisdom. How you doing, buddy? Doing awesome, man. Welcome to Pearl of Land again, boys and girls. Thank you for coming in and enjoying this fine programming one more time. Exactly. And graced with the Professor Joe. How you doing, brother? Doing well, doing well. That was a series of the Dallas Stars and Avalanche. That was probably the most exciting to watch in the playoffs when nobody would yeah. have picked the Dallas team to be a team that would have made the most exciting Agreed. series. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. You know, and you know what? Speaking of that, that's exactly what we're going to get into. We're going to talk about the Dallas Stars playing the Vegas Golden Knights. That's what's going to be coming out of the West. We're going to know all kinds of good stuff as far as what we think and who you should pick. So... First question I got for us is this. Dallas came out and played really, really well against Avalanche team who basically threw the kitchen sink at them. They put every all the kids in, they all the rookies in, all, and they just played their hearts out. And it got them to, get to the point where they got to the game seven. But Dallas, I think, was just a little too much. And their injuries, especially with uh, Hutchinson going out there, uh, I think that was the key as to why that took place you know what i mean um so uh professor joe what do you think do you think that was i mean that's what you pretty much mentioned to us before we got on air was that you thought that was one of the things but do you do you think there was another reason why or is it just because maybe things just were too mounted up against against the avs or do you think dallas just came to play um i think the avs had a lot of bad luck with injuries obviously but Dallas also came and played, other than when they couldn't close the series out for two games, uh, played their uh, played their best games and actually were able to get in front of the net score. Tyler Sagan looked like Tyler Sagan. Jamie Benn looked like Jamie Benn. Uh, well, Klingberg is just ridiculous at the point with that one shot. But, uh, thank you. Yep, thank but you. Um, like everybody looked like who they were supposed to. And nobody was having issues, especially Heiskanen, but that no, nobody expects that guy to have issues. He's the Carter Harder defenseman. It doesn't matter how old he is, he's never gonna have an issue. In the but right. like, you could probably put him up you could probably put him on the ice for thirty five minutes and he'll be like, Yeah, I'm wow. fine. Yeah. Great but, point. But everybody else will be like, There's no chance I'm going to the ice. <clears throat> yeah. He'll be like, I don't care. I'll do whatever the team tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like exactly. that was obviously a terrible decision by coaching, but that's just how good he is that he would do whatever you say. But they played well. Dickinson's a role player that plays well for Dallas. Like they just had everybody come in and play Clicked. really well. Uh, well, Kivaranta is an undrafted rookie that scored a hat trick. Uh, uh-huh. uh, Unheard of. Lindell, uh, in a couple games looked a lot better when he, Asa Lindell was solid this year, but not how he should have been. And then yeah. he looked very solid in the playoffs again. So that's also not just good for the playoffs, but good for Dallas in general. So, yeah, no, I exactly. Think they played a little bit, but I think it was they battled and played in the end in the moments that mattered better than Colorado to win the series. Like yeah. when it came Great. to the exciting moments of the game, yeah. that's awesome. when they beat. Yeah, awesome insight on that. Perlo, do you got some wisdom on that too, man? Do you think, because, you know, look, I, it's very unheard of to have a rookie come in and do that well, especially in the playoffs, especially with right now, especially coming in completely, utterly green, fresh, hasn't played, you know what I mean, the whole nine yards. So that in and itself right there is, I think, what helped propel Dallas over the edge. But with everything else you said, Ben being playing who he's supposed to be and, and Sagan being who he's supposed to be, you know what I mean? Perlo, give me some wisdom on what you think was the keys for Dallas um, taking care of their series and moving on to Vegas. I think it's basic. Um, I'm I'm more inclined to say that Hutchinson coming in was uh, it. It was a plus and not a plus. Um, Joe and I were talking about that be, uh, before. Colorado wasn't playing their game before Hutchinson went in, so it was like Hutchinson came in and then they sort of snapped in their head, going, "Oh, right, we got to play our offensive full bore." aggressive type game that helps us win games and they did and that first uh period when Hutchison was in for Dallas when they scored four goals in the first first period Dallas was kind of thrown off by it just like oh five goals by the way but yeah was it five or whatever yeah Yeah, five so uh there was thrown off by it 
Um, however, in the long run, it wasn't likely going to be able to remain that way. Um, and I think ultimately it was like, it was, it was something weirdly. something with those goalies named Michael. There's something with those journeyman goalies named Michael. It was weirdly probably kept Colorado or somehow woke them up and got them further, yeah. but also was the reason why they didn't win at the same time. So it's very yeah. odd. When it comes yeah. right down to it, if Colorado would have played their game the fir- right from the get-go, they would have destroyed Dallas. They didn't. Dallas kept on battling. They had a coach behind the bench, and I wanted to bring this up, bonus that looked like he was having a heart attack half through the series, which is not really beneficial. They went against the law. Dallas went against the grain and almost is doing what the Philadelphia Flyers is doing as well. And just finding ways through it all to get it done. And with who's on the ice. With who's on it on the ice. Yeah. And that's basically what happened. Having the kid come in like that fresh yeah. was Spark. huge exactly. against, Spark, again, yeah. a goaltender that – Probably should have stopped a couple of those shots. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's and see, I think I'm going to build off of what um, both of you guys said, obviously. Uh, but um, I think Joe, you pointed it out too. But Habodin actually played pretty darn well in that final game. I mean, I thought he played. He made some of the key stops there at the end that helped to keep the lead and to help to keep Dallas alive. You know what I mean? And so uh, we have the question mark going in, and that's why I wanted to touch on that, um, because we're not really sure who's going to be the starting goalie for Dallas right now, correct? Yeah, I would say there's not a definite answer there yet. But. Exactly. We And do we even know, speaking of starting goalies, let's go the other side of this now, Vegas. I mean, Vegas had to fight through Vancouver. That was not an easy series. Let's face it, that was not an easy series for them at all. You know, and there was a lot of doubts and a lot of issues that went through that whole series. And that was actually one of the more not as sexy as you, if you want to call series, you know, it was a good series, but not like the, the Dallas Vegas one, though, you know, or the, the Dallas, Dallas Colorado, Dallas, yeah. Colorado one. Yeah. So I don't know, man, it's, it's going to be tough because yeah. if Dallas can still build on what they've been doing, I think they have what it could take to match up against Vegas. Yeah. Well, I think Vegas basically revealed their cars at Leonard started. Because <clears> if, <throat> if you were going to remove him, it would have been after game six for game seven. Yeah. So I think the fact that he stayed in for game seven revealed their cars that he's starting. Be starting first. Um, where you could kind of go the same way with that. But the, but the reason with Dallas, I wouldn't say that per se is, I mean, you have Ben Bishop who on his, level when he's going good is one of the better goalies in hockey where Hudobin's a very good Hands goal down. as a backup that but that but that's the key he does have some weaknesses that's why he's been a platoon guy his entire career so um it's going to be an interesting decision I know uh Pirlo and I talked about it the one day if you're trying to play the game you're playing right now which is more of a simple let's just do what we got to do to win game you probably don't want Ben Bishop in because Ben Bishop tries to throw it around the boards, tells your defenseman to get his ass over there to get the puck. And, like, they're not used to playing that. And you saw that throw them off when Ben Bishop was in. So you have to get your team in sync to play with Ben Bishop if you're going to start him game one. It can't be like last game where everyone's just out of funk because yeah. Ben Bishop's in the game. Yeah, so because Vegas, Vegas will destroy you. They'll, they'll definitely tear you apart in that aspect of the game. You know what I mean? You throw it around the boards. You have some of the fair <laughs> and better <laughs> forward-checking players in the league. If you're just having your goalie throw the puck along the board, they're exactly. just going to come like, I'll take that. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah. And then score a goal. So, <laughs> Agreed. No, agreed. I mean, you know, so, Perla, do you, do you think that there's – um, look, we, we all kind of – we might kind of disagree on this pick here uh, as far as Dallas and, and, and Vegas, but Vegas came through relatively unscathed. Not too many people hurt, you know what I mean? Dallas came through relatively, I mean, with a few exceptions here and there, you know what I mean? Um, what do you think, man? What do you think is going to be the key to, to, the, to the series for, for Dallas or Vegas? Well, I think with Vegas, I mean – Vegas really should have beat Vancouver a lot sooner than they did. Let's face it. Uh, 
Demko was insane. Uh, in fact, uh, the first game Demko was in, Vancouver had no business winning that game at all. They outshot them ridiculously. <laughs> and um, and I, I mean, I think Vancouver is going to be an amazing team. It's going to be a contender very quick. They're just a little green, blah, 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 blah. You got what you have with Vegas against Dallas is Colorado, but um, you don't have that super, superstar like McKinnon. So you're not going to be able – Dallas isn't going to be able to just hone on one player as much as they it's can. It's more spread out in Vegas it's than it is. It's very spread out in Vegas. They're going to have to play a very complete game, a very – which, which, which concerns point. me with Dallas is when they start doing that, yeah. They start going back to the can't score game anymore, <laughs> not scoring. And if that's yeah. the case, Vegas will probably chew them up and spit them out pretty good. Um, I think you got to keep on going with Hudobin now because Hudobin is sort of like the idol for their scrappiness and fighting. He's played that type of goaltending. He's that type of goaltender that – um, I like what Kelly Rudy said from Sportsnet. He said he's not the most talented goaltender out there, but he's the scrappiest goaltender. He just he's a find a way type guy, and it seems like they're all climbing on the back of that and going that direction here. Um, so the key for them would be uh, Dallas has to be that presence. That has to be their presence in the game. They got to be yeah. the. Okay, you, you may outskill us, but you're not going to outwork us. And that's a tough team thing to do with Vegas it because is. Vegas is also a very hardworking team. But what we saw with Vancouver, though, is when Vancouver was starting to get pressure in the offensive zone for a consistent amount of time, Vegas started kind of wondering about themselves a little bit. And... Um, they, uh, if Dallas can play like they did against Colorado several times and throughout this series, uh, actually yeah. the last series even more so than this one, the, yeah. uh, a more aggressive style where they're confident in their shooters, and then um, and they have shooters there, Guriano. Oh uh, yeah, like you oh, said, that kid that they just came up, uh, Sagan when he wants to, Ben. They got shooters if they can trust that, play aggressive and not be afraid of Vegas in that way, but still play that um, we're going to outwork you every inch of the freaking ice type game, yeah. Dallas can win that game. Um, yeah. I just think that if you're going to – if I'm going to do percentages, I'm, well, I guess we'll tell you at the end because you're probably going to ask me what my prediction is. So. Yeah, we'll get but, to – just hang tight on that for a sec. Yeah. yeah. Dallas. What do you think would be the keys to the, to the games? On look, I know uh, it's a big ask because you're you're going for both teams here, but I think we've been able to talk intelligently very much so about the each team's chances, and so that's why I asked the question the way I did, so that I want to get your take exactly on what you think the keys for Dallas or the keys to Vegas. Um, well, Dallas is exactly what Pirlo said. They have to keep playing. That's why you should keep Hudobin, and that's kind of what I was getting. Like you have to get your players to play with Bishop, which might not be productive uh, when they're already doing it well in the system with uh, Hudobin. So I agree with that. Um, Where Vegas is a team, we have to remember, too, they brought this up on Sportsnet and NHL Network. Um, Shea Theodore is playing at a ridiculous clip, and he came back from testicular cancer. And the dude's playing like the second coming of like two people, two eight Eric Desjardins put together. He's playing so, the worst level. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, exactly. Like that's uh, that's I think their huge motivational factor too. Uh, similarly to the Flyers, had someone come back. I mean, if you have someone come back and they're playing like the second coming of Desjardins and you're playing, and you're just like, yeah, everybody, just get, make sure this guy has the puck, and you're like, okay, cool, perfect. Like that's going to thrive your team and motivate your team. Like Pirlo says, energy. You gotta always have energy from that, and then your goaltender beams energy. Like that's what that's who Rob Leonard is. He, yeah, like, exactly. He's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy. So that's and that's how Vegas operates. They the, that's a team that if you have energy, like they don't like sometimes they don't even care how good you are. It's more if you just bring the good energy, 
we're going to have you on our team. You might not play much. You might play on the fourth line a couple games a year, but we want you in our locker room. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like they have guys like that too, and they just know how to balance everything out. Um, and then they turn those guys somehow into actually very productive people when they got them just to be like, yeah, we're just going to put this guy in like five games a season. And then you long and behold, he plays like 30 and you're like, okay. Um, but, but they're yeah, really good at finding their talent and everything in Vegas. I just think, especially because they grabbed Alex Martinez, very smart pickup uh, for a playoff okay. uh, okay. team. Uh, they know what they're doing. They obviously brought Pat Ready and Stone over since they formed their team. And uh, yes, Patch already played really, really well in Game yeah. Seven. Patch already since coming back has been a menace in the playoffs. Exactly. The Wolf literally came back and came back like hot as a firecracker. So yeah, he's played. Uh, he played really, really well in Game Seven too. So yeah, I think the issue for Dallas is just going to be if they're trying to play an all-around game, they're not going to score enough. And if you're not scoring enough against Vegas, they're going to destroy you. Okay, so you're basically saying that D- Dallas needs to be the run and gun, and Vegas just needs to be basically who they are. Well, just they need to do what Dallas needs to do what Steve said and be aggressive, but they need to be smart. You can't just run and gun because Dallas probably can't play. Like the problem with Dallas is whenever they try to just gun it, then all of a sudden their defense is like, where's the puck? Where's yeah, the yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's what, so that's yeah, you can't necessarily yeah, just yeah. gun it because the only then that would actually know what's going on is probably the two youngsters in Heiskanen and Klimberg will be able to keep it together and everyone else will be like yeah right uh, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that wouldn't really so you need to be able to kind of balance it yeah. out uh, which like uh, Pirlo was hitting at is a concern with Dallas because when they try to balance their game and play teams that are not let me focus on one or two people as he was getting that they don't tend to score as much and that's mm-hmm. what I want to yeah. see against Vegas if they're trying to focus all on being them up, limiting their speed and limiting their end zone rushes, then Dallas probably is only going to score two goals. So yeah, yeah, no, great, great insight on that too. And and Pearl, that that that's that's like the perfect thing to what you, you said as far as that's concerned because they need to bring the energy, they need to continue to be the aggressive team and and things of that nature as well too. I think Dallas needs to continue being as well. I think they need to continue on with Abodin. Um, I think he's been the one that's been their been their guy. That's that they've been able to lean on the most. Uh, they play. They seem to have played better with him uh, in the last couple of games, and so I like him starting as well too. For Vegas, I'll tell you what. Look, I picked Vegas to come out of the West, and I picked Dallas to be my sleeper team. Okay, so to me, Vegas needs to just. I think they have that next level. I think they just need to put that next level in there, and I think they can do that against Dallas because I think if exactly what you guys say, if Dallas tries to key in on one or two, one line, they're not going to be able to do that because Vegas is too spread out. They got too much talent up and down their entire lineup, and I think it's going to be too much for Dallas to handle if they just try to focus. If if Dallas plays a more well-rounded 200-foot game, then then I think they have a, a, a better chance of beating out Vegas and, and doing the flip-flop and taking it to Vegas because they need to be the more aggressive team and, and whatever. So, all right, boys, here we go. Professor Joe, who do you like? How many games? What do you think? Lay it on me, brother. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, Hudobin's been good, but the reason he's a platoon goalie is you're going to find some. You have a team that's more spread out with offense. Uh, I feel like they're not going to be able to defend that as well in Dallas. Robin Leonard also has a, due to the help of his good team playing in front of him, obviously, but... I mean, a one nine nine goals against nine eighteen and three shutouts in the. But now yesterday's was a pretty easy, painless shutout. But uh, three so, shutout, two other shutouts in the postseason. Um, so that's yeah, I think uh, Vegas is just going to be too much firepower for Dallas, who's going to focus on too many things at once because they're playing a team they have to focus on a lot at once, and then that's just going to deter their offense if production. And that's why Vegas, I think, will win in six games, probably. Oh, there you go. There you go. Perlo, some wisdom. What do you think, man? How many games? Who do you think is going to do it? Um, 
I I got I got to go with Vegas for sure. Um, same sort of things as as Joe was saying. Like, what line are you? You can't just focus on one line. And then we've been saying that all. Okay, okay. Can Dallas not focus on one line? Is it possible that Dallas can do that? Well, I mean, sure. Uh, it's it, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility. But if I'm going on history. I would say that Dallas is not very adept at that. They have difficult yeah. times with deep teams. So yeah. historically speaking, it doesn't bode well for them. Uh, they've got, and they should, there's one part of da- that Dallas has that, that can beat uh, Vegas, and that's Pavelski, um, Tyler Sagan, and uh, Faxa down the middle. They're probably deeper on that in that in that regard than yeah. Vegas and their is. power play. Oh man, their power play is really, really has really clicked. Yeah, it has been going well, but his yeah. but it hasn't it's not something that historically has been the case. Great. So um but that being said, the wingers on those lines are nowhere near to the uh, a level of Vegas's wingers, and Vegas's overall defense is better. Um I just think that it's just gonna be too much. It's going to be too much for Dallas. Uh, I, I too much speed. Um, even though they do have uh, a lot of good centers, they're not super fast. Besides Sagan, uh, and uh, so and, and as far as Vegas is concerned, maybe on the talent side of things, up yeah. the middle they're not. But speed wise, they yeah, just got they them match. Per- yeah, they t- match. totally blown away. Um, yeah, yeah. After what I saw with Vancouver, unless we can have Demko like goaltending from uh, Hudobin, or if Bishop comes in and is Bishop, yeah, I think Vegas, I'm going to say Vegas in five. Vegas in five. All right, so we got we got Professor Joe saying Vegas in six, right? Mm-hmm. Right? And, yeah. and we got Pearls of Wisdom in Vegas in five. Well, <clears throat> I picked Vegas to be the team to come out of the West. And quite frankly, I agree with everything you guys said, and I'm going to say Vegas in four. Oh, sweet. Wow. Uh, be, the, and the reasons why is for every point that you guys made, because I think that Dallas is going to be more focused on trying to do everything and are not going to be able to focus on the fact that it's coming from somewhere else that they're not looking on Vegas because Vegas is too deep. OK, I think their goaltending, no matter who's back there in net, whether it's Laner, which, by the way, was an awesome pickup at the trade deadline for them guys. I mean, holy moly, what an awesome pickup that guy has been. I mean, yeah. that guy basically has set their off season to the point where they're at where they're at right now. Because yeah. let's face it, Murray played well. Our, our, our Flurry played well, but. Yeah. Lehner has been the one. Yeah. Right? In it's good the to see, too. Yeah, exactly. So I, yeah. I think that Vegas has better goaltending. I think Vegas has better defense. And although they don't have the big names like Sagan's and Ben's and that kind of stuff, I think the Vegas has better power play. And I think they're, they're faster up the middle. And I think that's going to be the key. And I think that's why I'm picking Vegas in four. Yeah, Vegas just has those guys that, like I said, they get them and they're like, this guy fits in so well with the energy of our team. Now we'll see what he can do. And Will exactly. Carrier was one of those guys. And Will Carrier has been a very productive bottom six guys when he's been in for exactly. in the second round pick. And yeah. then they, of course, took a chance on uh, – he hasn't been as good uh, when they took a chance on Peary, but that's because Brandon Peary has some other things. Uh, but – Yeah, uh, no, I agree. Yeah, they uh, – They've been good. Noshik was a guy that they took a chance with, and he's one of their fans' favorite players since he showed up in the so that worked out well. Um, yeah, so like they just know sure. how to find people and scout. It seems. Yeah. Not the not sure. necessarily the draft, but scout like in league people. Yeah. 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 Well, there you have it, folks. We got the great pearls of wisdom, and we got the great Professor Joe. So we got every single thing that you could think of to be picked we got vegas in six vegas in five and vegas in four (laughs) so there you go 
What now you have it. About that, right? You don't even have to watch the games now. You don't even have to watch. That's right. We, we got you covered. We're all good on that for sure. So, uh, Perlo, tell all the fine folks out there how we can get a hold of you and where we can follow you and where we can continue to get all your great insight and all your great content. www.steelflyers.com, finest website in the land for sports it's going to be amazing it's already pretty cool as it is go check us out you can find all of our information there patreon youtube go download the patreon app and go be pow and you can find our uh, work there that we're help work we help people make a lot of money there you can be part of it that would be awesome by we i'm talking about the dude right across from us here boric one of the finest also in the land guys. yeah man the great professor joe yeah buddy how can we follow you how can we get in touch with you and how can we uh, keep all the great content coming from you uh jj boric 26 is my twitter b-o-r-e-k uh true underscore philly sport is a podcast and pub sports radio and ot heroics are a couple of the sites that i write for yeah man and for sure and those. you can also yeah, and you can also find all of Professor Joe's on the Steel Flyers website. Uh, speaking of Steel Flyers, that's me. I'm Steel Flyers. You can find me on Twitter at Steel Flyers 52. And also, you can find the Pearls of Wisdom and Professor Joe on the Steel Flyers website at www.steelflyers.com. Also, stay tuned for a lot of great upcoming announcements and a partnership coming up here real soon and all kinds of great, great uh, programming coming up for everybody so stay tuned a lot of great announcements just remember two things stay safe stay strong and hang tough <laughs>